about about what Og was saying in his last video about the digital digital mirror. And uh, and how much that mirroring process actually is our lives here. It's not it's not just that it's uh an aspect, it is the avatar life. It's the, the mirroring system. And, and I'm not saying that the whole existence here is the, the mirroring system, although it, perhaps you could you could make the argument for that. But the way our consciousness flows through the avatar bodies and how and the cause and effect that uh, is your day-to-day -day activities It's you. It's the mirror is literally you, right? A reflection of you is you. If if you're walking by water and you see your your shadow in the water, okay, it's not exactly the shape of your body because it's elongated depending on the angle of the sun and also the refractive properties of water. And whatever's underneath the water, etc. But you can still see that it's a direct correlation. If you if you were to imagine, uh, and and a way that I can perhaps make this a little bit clearer with his video that he was making, um, he was drawing, right? He was drawing circles, and, and you know, he's drawing the polarity extremes. And, you know, you're kind of on one side or the other, and you know, the reflection or the realm is you know, the other side. Um, you know, that's not exactly what he's saying. He's saying there's an actual inverse uh, reality that correlates with yours, but it's about reflective properties and distortion that's added into that. So when he was sitting there drawing whatever picture he's drawing, there's X and Y coordinates that, you know, it's moving back and forth no matter what he's doing. He's drawing a scribble, doing this, curve, whatever. Uh, you're seeing a mirror effect of that on the edges. Uh, that little dot is dancing back and forth. And that movement of those points is the same thing. It's a reflective process that is manifesting uh, in a different way. But it's the same information. It's the information code. It's an aspect of the information code of whatever drawing he was making. Now, if you just showed someone that process and said, yeah, the, the dots moving on the X and Y coordinates on the outside of the box that he's drawing inside are the same exact information that's showing up on the screen, but just a different way of portraying it. If you tell somebody that, if you just showed them the thing first and said, what are those dots on the sides? They might not make the connection immediately that it's the drawing that's happening. I get confused about it or if you imagine that you know you're, you could videotape somebody and have a, a program just add widgets on the the copycat just kind of like uh, the snapchat filters right they're attaching onto someone's actual video uh, a widget like a, a thing an overlay and it's still them, it's still reflecting of their movements, but it has an overlay on it. So that's kind of like what we're dealing with here, where we have the, or the organic realm, or at least the appearing organic, organic realm, you know, that's debatable depending on if you believe in sim theory or not. And then you have uh, the interpretive state of the mind, which takes in, I mean, we don't know what the raw material looks like, or at least we've been 
blocked from that. I've been blocked from that. I don't know exactly how the material springs forth, but it's a it's something that reacts to your movements. And it doesn't react to every single movement, but if you wish to engage with the other beings that are running around or rolling around, it's there's some sort of a refle uh, reflexive quality that happens if you're discussing things with them. It's a mirroring. When you're having a conversation with somebody, it's a mirroring that's happening. And yet, you know, the, the negative qualities that come out in the realm, they could be attributed just to uh, errors in communication. And errors in communication can be attributed to uh, the distorted quality of language, of, of conceptualized communication because it's always subjective and due to interpretation. And there are people, people are manipulative, people are fearful, then that reflexive mirroring quality that is, can be, I wouldn't say it's supposed to be, but can be uh, harmonious. A conversation can be harmonious mirroring. And not just mirroring, but enhancing is happening, you know, energetic exchange is happening. It can be that, but if, if other things are introduced, if technological overlays are introduced, if outside influence is introduced, and if all of this is being withheld from the person, the being, the spirit uh, inside of the avatar body, then uh, lots of miscommunication can happen. Especially if mad scientists or whatever are doing these experiments and psychological experiments and whatnot, and they don't know exactly what they're doing, they're just writing down notes and saying, you know, we input X sort of a variable and here's the output, you know, spectrum and they think that they've figured out exactly what's going on and I, I have a feeling it's more complicated than that and more simple. It's more complicated and more simple. But I know that there is an aspect of the realm which is, you know, you can likely see this if you get deep into meditation but to where all of the motion and movement is a mirroring of its own self. And it got very complex because, you know, the, the self or the existence is very complex, but at the base root, likely, it's just fractal mirroring down to the minutia and then fractal mirroring out to the larger body's motions and movements. But there's, of course, still, even if that can feel like a trap, that can feel very constrictive and constricting. And it is, if you if you just let yourself go into that thing, then you're like, oh, I move this and that moves that, and now everything is my own movements and I'm trapped. But you have to feel outside of that. You have to feel outside of the mirroring phenomena which is inherently present in the realm and feel out to outside of that. And that's what the inner spaciousness is. That's what the, the energetic spirit space is. It's the interweave, the, the interplay of your spirit versus the materiality. You're, even if the realm as it is, is uh, an exact mirroring of two poles, which are not seen, even if that's the case, so the spirit is not involved with that, so to speak. It's, it's simply uh, part of the dance or an observer aspect, an observer element, which is uh, uh, something that, you know, you were taught in Buddhism, is that the watcher is, everything is watched. It's not, yes, there is a there is an entanglement of spirit and matter, but depending on Depending on how attached you as spirit is, depends on how free you are. Because at the, at, the, at the outermost layer of consciousness, you're not attached to any of it. Whatever is you is not attached to any of it. And then whatever is you isn't even a thing whatsoever. It's just there is a, an observing happening. And at that point, the more that you, whatever you are, whether you exist or don't exist, doesn't matter. Like there is something consciously happening. However much that clit clutching and that constricting can relieve 
release is to the extent to which you're going to release into what is natural and wholesome and uh, the, the, the pure essence of consciousness rather than the manipulative ego state which almost everybody uh, falls directly into immediately here. So anyway, some thoughts on the reflexive properties of the room. Hope everybody's doing well. Take care. Peace.